Well, today is really exciting because I finally built this. This is the Music 5000 synthesizer, or rather a clone of the Music 5000 synthesizer. It was redesigned by somebody called Jason on the Stardot forum, and he designed a PCB for it, which somebody else has manufactured, and I was able to buy a PCB for it, and I ordered a load of components, some of them of which are now out of production, and amazingly, I got it to work. So on this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like, and then I'm going to let you hear some of the preset sounds that were inside this synthesizer and just give you a flavour of kind of what it sounds like and why I find it completely fascinating that 35 years after it kind of first was in production, I've been able to recreate something from the past. And before you ask, no, I don't have an optical mouse for my BBC Micro, that is just my PC mouse on the side. Here is my trusty BBC Micro that I've had since 1983. And on top of it, you can see the Music 5000 circuit board. Here's a closer view of the circuit board. Now, it came just as a purely unpopulated PCB. Some of the parts on the PCB were quite hard to find. This chip here is the digital to analog converter. Now that chip is no longer in production. However, I was able to source some from America. And the same goes with these two chips here. These are the two memory chips. Again, they're out of production, but you can find new old stock on eBay, which I did, and I was able to source them and build the board. As we take a look at this side of the PCB, this is the power supply section. This is 15 volts AC coming in. There's the rectification, smoothing capacitors, and you've got the regulation circuit here. These two ICs give you a plus and minus 15 volt rail, which is used for the D to A, it's used for the, um, the op amps that drive the audio output and some other parts of the circuit. And this regulator here gives us the 5 volt rail for all the logic on the circuit. This silver thing here, this is the clock that generates the clock that syncs everything to it. That's a 12 megahertz crystal, which is uh, substantially faster than the crystal that's inside the BBC Micro itself. On this side of the board, this circuit here is the amplification circuit, left and right op amps, and that then goes on to the output here. You can actually fit a jack socket there if you wish. In the case that I'm probably going to mount this in, I'm just going to have two quarter inch jack sockets bolted to the side, so I'm not going to be using that at all. So I've just got the uh, connector there just going to some phonos for now. The rest of the chips on the board are basically various logic circuits. Um, I'm not a great expert on, the, on this particular circuit, but uh, all I do know is it works. And here you can see an additional uh, connection there for adding additional boards. You can actually have two of these boards running, so you can double up your sounds. And you can also add this, which is the Music 2000 MIDI interface. Now, I've already done a video about these because I bought one of these ready-made by a guy in Norway. And when I bought the PCB for the Music 5000, this came with it. So I've decided to build this as well. I'm still waiting for some chips, as you can see, but this will plug in there, and then you just use some standoffs, and this will bolt to the top of the PCB for when it's mounted in the case, and it'll get its power from the 5 volt rail there. Well, I've been learning a little bit more about how to program one of these. Um, it's not exactly simple, it's not like a traditional sequencer, but it's very powerful for the small amount of memory. Remember, these computers have 32K of RAM. Now, this works on a system called Ample, which is it's a music programming language. So it's not like this is like a, on a Windows PC, you've got Windows programs and they use standard Windows convention. This is its own system. But the great thing about it is it's very powerful because you don't need to put in as much data into what you're doing as you would do into a traditional sequencer. You literally just can put in letters and characters and they play the notes. I'm just showing you my screen here. Now, I have done this on the other video, but just as a recap, what I've got here is basically a bit of text in, in the notepad. And what I've done is I've 
put in a command to select the sound that I want. And you notice it says three. What that means is I'm going to be using three notes. In general, you can run eight notes at once on this system. So you could have eight monophonic sounds, or you could have a mix and match of monophonic and polyphonic sounds. So I'm using three notes because I've just got some chords here. And the chords are set out like this. So you've got the root note, which is a C, and then you've got an E and a G to make the chord. And these lines here just basically are, re are like repeats of the notes. So you've basically got the chord playing for four beats effectively. One, two, three, four. And then we've got a D chord there. And then we've got an F and a C there. And then we've got an F chord there. And then we've got a high C chord there. Now you've got these little arrows pointing upwards. They're rests and they, they effectively turn the notes off. Because if you don't put them in there, the note will just continue playing until it's told to stop. As I say, this is a programming language rather than it actually being a music sequencer. Okay, the first sound I'm going to demonstrate is this um, organ sound. It's a standard church organ. Now I'm playing it, I've set my chords to be an octave below middle C, uh, but then I've then set it to be the middle octave for the last chord. And so we've got four chords there and then the last chord. So I'm just going to play you those chords now. And then you've got the rest at the end that stops the notes. Now, if I just use the, move the cursor and, for example, I will then change that octave to the middle octave and then I'll play it. So just by one change of that digit, I've already shifted the octave. So, you know, when you think sometimes when you want to transpose a section of notes in a modern sequencer, you might highlight all the notes and then do a right click or you might just drag them up and down. Here you can just type in one number. Now, the way Ample works is that you do each bit in a little sequence like that and then you stitch them all together. Now, I'm going to do some more videos in the future about Ample programming, but for now, this is just one sequence of five chords on five bars effectively. If I then change that number to say one, and I'll take the minus number out, that's now shifted it up an octave. You notice this chord is staying in the same place because I haven't changed the octave there. So there, it doesn't sound quite so natural up at that height. So I kind of think the, if we're playing chords at sort of the um, middle minus octave again, then that's got your sort of traditional sort of church organ sound. I mean, yes, it does sound a bit dated now and a bit eighties, but you've got to remember this is not so, this not sample technology. This isn't a DX7. This is a one single circuit board with a with 37 chips on it and a very very old computer i'm going to change one of the sounds now so we had the organ there and i'm going to go to pan flute now all i have to do is literally type in type in pan flute and there it is playing now that's pretty, pretty low in pitch. So I'm going to just move the cursor down and I'm gonna make that two and take away the minus. And again, that's probably too high actually. So I've now got it at one.
Okay, I'm going to show you something different now. Um, I'm using the Moog sound that it has. And I've got four sets of notes that are repeating. And it might go a little bit strange. And you'll see why, and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm going to play it to you. Yep, you could hear it was going up an octave that time. And the reason was, of course, is because you're with a capital letter that goes upwards and a lowercase letter goes downwards. And the last uppercase was up here, so that's going to go up to the next D. So what you need to do is you need to make that lowercase and I need to make that lowercase and I need to make that lowercase. And I think it will work now. And uh, you might know that as being the melody line from Save a Prayer by Duran Duran. And I'm just zooming in on the waveform of the sound that we just heard. And you can see it's a, a triangular waveform. And uh, yeah, very triangular. OK, we're going to listen to the kick drum now. That's not bad. That's, uh, you know, sounds like a 80s kick drum. So uh, this is the symbol. Yeah, that certainly can't be anything else other than the 80s. And there's another percussion called Yak Bell. Yeah, you've basically kind of got a early 80s, almost sort of acid house collection of sounds in there. OK, I've now programmed in to the electric guitar voice and I'm playing a little riff in fifths. So I only need two notes for the chords and you might kind of work out what this might be. Yes, of course, the famous 1972 Deep Purple riff of Smoke on the Water played on a 1982 BBC Micro. I'm just going to take that down one notch and just play that. So yeah, it's got a bit more, bit more variation and just, just, just for the hell of it, I'm going to take this up to Yeah, that's pretty horrible. I, I think we can live without that. Um, this, this was its standard pitch. So it's not exactly a guitar sound and you've kind of got to take the octave down. And I think that's the thing with a lot of these old synths in general. The voices they say they're going to create aren't necessarily the voices that you actually know and recognise. So I'm just going to change the voice now to a sound called Ring Sin, which I think is a brass sort of sound. So yeah, that's a nice sort of 80s brass pad. I think you could modify that. All these sounds can be modified in the program. Again, it's a lot more, there's a lot more stuff you can do with it. But there again, you could always man manipulate it with effects later. And here's a personal favourite now. This is Slap Bass. This is a personal favourite. This is Slap Bass. <laughs> And there's a few other bass sounds on here as well. There's one called Upright, which I will uh, let you hear.
And uh, I'm just gonna play you one more sound now called Vibe Glock. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds quite cool, actually, in a kind of a alien kind of way. I wonder what that would sound like um, if I got that up to uh, middle C pitch. Let's have a listen. Um, you may have noticed I've actually got two of these octave commands because this goes up quite high and I need to get it back down again, so I reset the octave. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my little demonstration on what the Music 5000 system can do. There will be more videos coming up. I've got to learn the manual, which I've uh, been going through the last few days, and hopefully I'll be able to give you a bit more of a better sound on how this thing works. I think if I'm completely honest, the way I'm going to use this in my music creation, because I do want to have this on my next album, is I'm gonna write melodies as I have done on the screen, I will then record those melodies into my main computer and then import them into the project I'm working in and use it that way. Because I think if you're going to use this purely to create music, it is a sledgehammer to crack a nut. But on the other hand, it's also a challenge, so who knows. But uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I've got some more stuff coming up very soon. I've got a very exciting new electronics build that I'm going to be doing very soon. Hopefully I'm going to start building it next week. And uh, I'm really excited about that. Anyway, I've been glad that so many of you have been commenting on my videos. Uh, I'm very pleased to say my subscription base has been going up a little bit and my view counts have been going up, which is great. So yeah, please, if you like any of the videos I make, please like and subscribe, share them amongst your friends on social media, and uh, then that will give me a bit more of an impetus to uh, make more videos for you. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this very basic demo of the Music 5000. Um, I'd very much like to thank Jason on the Stardot forum who actually created this in the first place and spent all that time working out where all the bits go and making a brilliant circuit board. And uh, I really enjoyed building this. And I, I must admit, I did not think for a second this was going to work. And it didn't to start with. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I couldn't get it to work. I reseated all the chips. That made no difference. Then I resoldered a couple of the joints on the board. That didn't seem to make any difference. But then I did the thing where I disconnected the power lead and then I plugged it back in again and it all came good. So I think as a tip, if you ever build one of these, I think you need to switch the computer on first and then switch on the Music 5000 and then it will, it will do exactly as it's supposed to do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I will be posting more up very soon. Thanks for watching.